The number one mistake I see uh, people doing with Splunk is they run their Splunk instance as root or as admin, whether you're Linux or uh, Windows. The concept is do not run Splunk in it with elevated rights. Uh, this particularly uh, applies to Linux, but it just as much applies to Windows. Um, there's, there's lots of reasons to do it. It's against best practice. Um, when you start moving files back and forth, you start getting permission issues. That can be an annoyance, but that is not the biggest reason. The biggest reason is it's a security hole. Uh, Splunk will be running as root, which means if you can get Splunk to do something else that it's not intended to do, that will run as root as well. There are ways to make Splunk run commands and scripts, and if those scripts are malicious, such as opening up a uh, firewall hole, changing configs on your computer, opening up a reverse, pro uh, reverse shell into your machine, those are all bad things and you don't want that, that to occur. And so I highly recommend that you do not run Splunk as root. How do you know if you're running Splunk as root? Some of us are gifted system admins on Linux. Others of us are just uh, uh, barely competent to keep it running. Um, it's okay. I'm going to show you. We put together something here. If you go to GitHub and you go github.com, go to Lame Creations with a capital C. Um, you can see uh, some repos we've got here. The biggest one, Lame Training Splunk app. I put together two simple little scripts to help you find stuff. You want to know who owns the Splunk on your system? Just go grab this little script right here. Just copy it, and we're going to SSH into my box. And if I go paste this command, let's go clear it. Clear the screen, paste, run that command. I'll get back everything to do with Splunk. Uh, well, with the Splunk process, and we can see who's running. Splunk D is running a Splunk. Uh, all these different files are all running a Splunk. So this system is set up right. We're good. Um, but if you're not, if you don't have that situation, if root comes back on any of those, how do you fix it? Well, we got you covered there as well. Got another little script, create Splunk user account. All you're gonna do is you're gonna go download this and run it. Just copy the whole folder, copy all the files, and then you're gonna put it into a text file, make it executable, and then run it. And it will basically look through, it'll stop Splunk, it'll change the ownership, it will find out if you have a Splunk user, if you don't have a Splunk user, it will create the Splunk user, and ultimately it will restart Splunk and create boot start, meaning that every time Splunk starts, that it will run as Splunk. That is the quickest way that Splunk finds itself. You set it up to run as one user, then you come in, root comes in and for some reason restarts the machine, restarts the service of Splunk, all of a sudden now Splunk is owned by root. That's the quickest way it happens. Uh, so if you do this enable boot start, you don't have to worry about that occurring every time it's restarted starts, it will run as Splunk. Now, the question is, okay, what about we've got the ability to change it? Why don't we monitor? What if we have lots and lots of different Splunk systems? Do we know if they're running as root? I've been on systems where there's dozens of uh, different Splunk enterprise instances, and we want to make sure every one of those instances is not running as Splunk. So easy, simple solution. We're going to come in here. First off, let's go build us a script. We're going to go to see home. I've already built it, but that's okay. We'll take you through this lame scripts. And if I go to um, interesting, so if I'm going to make a script here and I'm going to call it uh, Vi Chain uh, Monitor Who Owns Splunk dot sh, and I'm just going to go paste that little command in there. I'm going to exit, write the file, and then I'm going to chmod plus x. And now, when I list this file, we can see that um, this is owned. Now we just need to move that into a file that Splunk can use. So op Splunk bin scripts. Sorry, that's let's write that correctly. We're going to write monitor there. Now that right there, we should be able to see it there. If I go opt splunk bin scripts, and there it is. That that was for a different demo, but the same. They're the exact same script. Anyway, I'm going to go run that. 
And if we come into add data, I'm going to do monitor. And I'm going to grab from a script. I'm going to grab the script path. I just put it in op Splunk bin scripts. Cool. I've got, there's my monitor on Splunk. I'm going to tell it to run on a cron schedule, run every day. And I'm going to have it run, say, at 18 o'clock. And I'll hit next. I'll have it a We're going to make a new source type. We're going to call it who owns Splunk. We're going to make it part of lame EDU. And we're going to put it in a, in, a in, uh, index. We'll go with lame test. If I hit review and then I click done, that'll create the process every time at 6 o'clock my time. It will go and read that, read that script take the output of the script and ingest it. Then I can write a quick query and look for anything that is running as root. I can just even look for the word root and I know it's, so I could just do a index equals lame test, source type equals who owns Splunk and just write the word root. And everything that comes back will tell me, oh, that instance needs to be a uh, fix. And I can go push that out with a script. Um, it's really quite simple. It's incredibly a big risk to have a Splunk running as root or as admin, but the solution seems daunting but it's actually really simple. Just take those two scripts, run them. Your instance will be uh, running as root. It uh, will not be running as root anymore. You can also um, make sure you follow the process when you install it the first time. Make sure you make a Splunk user and set up those very last lines in that big script and it will always run as Splunk. Um, this is best practice. It'll save you a lot of hassle in the long run. I hope this helps you moving from being a lame analyst to a Splunk Ninja. If this was useful, please like or subscribe. I, I can't emphasize how important it is when you guys hit that like and when you subscribe to the channel. That helps me grow uh, this so that other people can get this information to them. If you think it's of any value and you think others should see it, the quickest way to make sure YouTube displays this for others is to hit that like and hit the subscribe button. Uh, thanks so much. Have a great day.